Sisterhood Night. We are so glad that you have joined us. My name is Megan. And I'm Lori. And we are here. We yes, are live. We are. It is finally time. I have been looking forward to this for a while now. I am so glad it's finally time. I hope that you are watching with your sisterhood. And if you are, let us know how many people you have watching. I would yes. love that. My mom has about 15 that girls is awesome. watching at her house. So Sharon, put in the chat Probably right Kansas now. City, right? Are they, where She's are from they? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. But we know. We have a group in Kansas yes, City. Yes, we do. So from all over the country, yes. all over the world, we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. We want to know where you're at, girls. Yes. Please let us know. Take a picture. Put it. Tag us at, at Design Sisterhood. Yes, and on any platform so we can see it. Absolutely. Also, you want to share this experience. So make sure you text or email your besties. Yes. Let them know because, girls, tonight is going to be so much fun. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a way. party. We're having a party on here before, we and we're going to have a party during. So it's going to be so, so much fun. You don't want anybody to miss it. You yes. want them to join in. The service is going to be so good. It is. And if this is your first time at a sisterhood event, we want to say welcome. We are so glad that you've joined us. Click the link in the chat so you can stay up to date on just the sisterhood and everything that we have going on. And not just that, but if you click the link in our chat, we have the sisterhood that is ready to pray for you Absolutely. in any need that you may have, or you could put your need in the chat and we want to pray with you and your sisterhood from all around the world would love to join you in prayer as well. Yes. So tonight, girls, it's going to be so much fun. So get ready. In just a few minutes, we're going to be kicking off the night. It's going to be a yes. great night. Don Cherie is going to be speaking tonight. Can't wait. So good. I love She's her. She's amazing. Our amazing worship. We have James River. Worship is, yeah. it is so, so incredible. Good. And of course, you will hear from Pastor Debbie. It's going to be so good. So please make sure that you're joining in on the chat, letting us know um, just what you're thinking and during the service yes. and how oh good it is. Put emojis. Put your favorite yes. emoji. What's your, what is your favorite emoji? I love all of the flower emojis. And there's so many. We have flowers on <laughs> campus here we tonight. Do. Lots, lots. Beautiful. They are so beautiful. Put your favorite flower emoji yes. in the chat. And let's do a flower thing. Show us your favorite flowers. Yes, absolutely. I, my favorite emoji. Mm -hmm. I use the yes. like laughy face emoji yeah. a lot. Just, I don't know. I think, cause I like to laugh. I like to laugh. I know. Party. Oh, I know. Okay. So you could do the party. The oh, little blow. It's a party. The, it's a party. Little a party blow horn party. That's, so, that would be fun. So, Yes. Anyways, put emojis in the chat. Join the chat because that make that just makes it so much fun. It does. And right now, while we're waiting for things to start, put like what food you're having. Do you have any snacks? Do you have some coffee, some lemonade? What's your favorite? What would you be eating right now if you could be eating? I would be eating, okay, boom, chicka pop, the oh, purple bag, yeah, the kettle that's corn. Good. That's good. That's what I would have right now. What about you? Absolutely. Ooh, I would probably be having a chocolate chip cookie. Mm, I, with milk? I, no, just really, just a, just a good, yummy homemade, <gasps> homemade. Oh, yes, homemade. It has to be homemade, but homemade no chocolate. No, no. You just eat not. just the cookie, nothing yeah, with just, it. I mean, maybe some coffee. I might actually. Oh, I would probably. I don't always uh -huh. drink coffee at night because it keeps me awake. Oh, me too. But sure. I want to. This is going to be a party tonight, it is. and so I would want to stay awake for the whole thing. So I would be drinking coffee, coffee. Ice right now. Hot. I always do hot, and I know do it's you? really hot. Sure. It may not be hot where you are, but That's it is. So true, girls. I don't know where you're at, but it is 98. It's so hot here. It is so hot. So it's, hot. It was 98 degrees when we were coming in. Oh, and my it's, word. I mean, 98 degrees. Can you believe that? So anyways, <laughs> girls, we also have giveaways. So you want to <gasps> yes. stay on till the very end. Absolutely. Because we are going to be giving things away. Yes, we love giving gifts here. And we have some gifts for you. We have some merch to give away. So tonight, if you will take a picture of you and your sisterhood, tag us at Design Sisterhood. And we are going to send you some merch. We actually have some oh, here. We have some. Oh, yes, you. we do. Because we have a boutique. Oh. We have yes. the boutique and we have online. So girls, you right now, before service gets started, yes, absolutely. you want to go shop, get online, shop.designforlife.org and get this merch because absolutely. it's incredible. So this shirt, sure. our shirts that we have on, mm -hmm. aren't they so cute? Look at us. Oh, aren't they? And we have different stuff. Look, look at these things. This is the back of Lori's right now. Yes, it is. And isn't it fun? Sunny skies ahead. I think that's so cute. I love it. I that's love why it. I picked it. It's such a summer I, color. It is. It's so fun. And this one, isn't that so adorable? I like that. Yes, it's so cute. I like that sun. So many things on, online what is this that one you say? can get. Hello, sunshine. I like that one a lot too. I almost picked that one. I but. just saw, I went to the boutique just a second ago and there were a lot of girls getting this one. Yes, absolutely. So girls, again, it's going to be an amazing night. It's going to be so good with Don Cherie speaking. Um, our yes. worship team, always so our good. production will never disappoint. They're 
So, so, so good. Really, really good. But not only do we have tonight, we have our Design for Life conference coming up we in do. October. Why don't you tell them about it? Baby? We have that coming up on October. We actually have two weekends. We have one at GSB Arena, and then we also have one here at our South Campus in person. And you know what? There's nothing like being in the room, so get here if you can. But we also know that things come up and you're not always able to, so we have an online experience as well. And we would just love for you to join us in whatever capacity that you can. We have some amazing speakers like Don Cherie. Yes, she's we'll be here be for that. Pastor well. Debbie, Debbie. Oh Lindo. my word, yes. Pastor so Debbie's good, always, so always good. good. Bianca is going to be in the house. Love Bianca. Yes, absolutely, so good. We have a video that you guys can check out. Yeah, absolutely. Our beloved Father, dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn as we display the colors of heaven, as we carry the fragrance of your presence. May your every purpose be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. Goodness, that looks incredible. So good. It's Design good. for Life is going to be so good. Amazing. You do not want to miss it, whether yes. you're in person or you're online. Yes, either one, either way. it'll be so good. Yes. Plus, we have a special conference reveal tonight. It's going to yes. be so good. So Don't miss it. You want to stay on. You want yes. to see that. It is, it is going to be good. So yes. hello, everyone. Just welcome to Design Sisterhood tonight. We're so glad that you're joining us. It's going to be a party. Yes, it is. Yes. I'm Megan. And I'm Lori. And we are so glad that you are here. If you are just now joining us, welcome. If this is your first time to a sisterhood event too, welcome again. Click the link in our chat so you can stay up to date with all the fun things that we have coming up and so that you can stay in the know of what's coming up. Absolutely. And not only that, but we want you to share this experience mm -hmm. because it's, we know it's going to be good. It's yes. going to be a party. You know it's going to be good. But we want you to share it with your besties. So you Do. make sure you text mm -hmm. it, you email it. It, you call, call your friends, whoever. Maybe yes. you even have a party right now. And if you are having a party, we want to know about it. So send us a picture, put it yes. in the chat, tell us where you're from, put where your party is. I know your family's having yes. a party, right? From Oklahoma. That is awesome. We have yes. a party in Kansas City, I know. We do. And I know we have some from all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have the sisterhood that is everywhere. And we want you to take a picture of your sisterhood and tag at Design Sisterhood. And we are going to send some merch to some awesome girls who yes. have tagged us in that. And not just that, we were talking about Design for Life, y'all, and we just showed a video. So if you missed it, we may show it again, or you may have to look it up for yourselves because it's going to be amazing. But we want to give away two, two registrations two. Yes. DFL tonight. So after the service, stick around because you're going to see us again, and we're going to give those away. We yes. would love for you to be here to win one of those. Absolutely. And not only is Dawn Cherie speaking tonight, she's yes. also speaking on Sunday. I can't which wait. We are in the middle of our sizzling. I've, I've been calling them our hot sizzling because sizzling just makes me think yeah. of hot. Summer does too. So yeah. our sizzling summers, it is hot. It is amazing. So we want you hey. to check out this video that we have about our sizzling summers. We landed in London. And when I'm with Rick, he's taking care of the plan. He's got the tickets, he knows the gate. And so I'm crushing my phone and I'm texting my mom and I'm just following his feet as he walks through the terminal until suddenly I hear my name as he yells it so loud, Don Cherie. And I look up and I am standing in the middle of the men's bathroom. I just looked around and kind of just waved and said, oh, God bless you, all of you. I'll see you outside, babe. That's real good. I cannot wait until Sunday.
Sunday, y'all. Don Cherie is going to be so great. So make sure that you join us this Sunday as well in person or online. We would love to see you there. It is going to be so good. So girls, make sure we have our online shop. You want to go to our online boutique because it's going to be amazing. And you're, if you're just joining us, we have merch to show you. Yes, we do. It's so cute. It's so summery. Like this shirt. This shirt is so much fun. And the back. Megan's going to show us the, the back because it is just the cutest thing. Yes, look at that. Sunny skies ahead. I, I just love that. I think it's so cute. That's I why, I, 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 that's why that. I picked that one. I like that back one. Because of what it said. So we have that one. There's so much more than this. So we just picked there a couple things to show you. But be sure and go there now yes. because it's going to be sold out, y'all. Everybody open. just loves the DSN merch and they snatch it right up. So be sure and go now before service starts. Absolutely. And so Megan's shirt also is so cute. And then it has cute words on the back too. Sunshine. sunshine is so it. so cute. And this last one, here. one we brought. Yes. Hello, sunshine. Adorable. So there's there's lots lots more. So you want to make sure and go right now. Get on Such there because you want to order it. Those yes, great summer colors. They will send it to you. It is yes. so good. So girls, if you're joining us right now, it's going to be an incredible night with Don Cherie production. I don't know what the production is. I haven't but seen it. I haven't either. But I can promise you it's going to be good because yeah. I know we are going to, we're going to get in there and we're going to watch it because it's going to be Every so good. single time the production, it just blows me out of the water. The Absolutely. things that they've come up, up with, with. Yes. So good. So good. And our worship is incredible. It's it going to be so good. So make sure you're just leaning in tonight. You're worshiping with us okay. and it's going to, girls, if you need prayer, we want to know Absolutely. about that. We do. Please let us know. Please click in the link below and we will pray with you. We'll have a team member that we will do. call you okay. and we want to hear your needs and we believe in miracles we believe that Absolutely. the lord will answer your prayers and so we want to hear from you you know i was thinking about it earlier my favorite thing about design for life design sisterhood nights and honestly just our church is hearing the testimonies of just how god is mm -hmm. healing and just everything that he's everything. doing, even just a touch from the Lord that yes. people have and they come and they tell us about it. So that's my favorite thing about tonight is everything that we're going to hear that God's going to do in your life. Yes. We want to hear about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And that's my, that's my favorite it part. It encourages it's us. It's such an encouraging It's encouraging thing. us. Yes. So you make sure if the Lord answers your prayer, we want to hear that testimony because yes. it does. I promise you, it encourages the pastors here on staff, the Absolutely. other people on staff. It just, it, it builds our faith. Oh, so much. Yes. So that we can even tell other people who need prayer, like, hey, we've been there or we've prayed with people who had that exact same need and God touched them. And so please reach out to us. Let us pray with you. And put, if you put it in the chat, we know we have sisterhood from mm -hmm. all over the world yes. who's going to be praying with you as well. So Absolutely. be sure, make some friends tonight in the chat and yes. get to know some people. I love our online sisterhood. Yes, and I love okay. how like you can get to know people from all around the world. And this is the connection. It's so great. Good. So we're getting ready to kick off the night, Megan. Yes, we are. It, it, this, it's going to be good, girls. So you just get ready for this because it is going to be so much fun. We have just a night full of surprises. I know we there's do. a DFL surprise. <gasps> yes. It, it's just Stick around for that for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to get on the boutique. Um, make sure that if you're new to Sisterhood, you go to the Sisterhood Connect. Yes, just do. All you can stay up to date on everything that's coming up because, and we want to know you. So be sure and connect with us so that we can get to know you and just know more about you. And we would just love to have you in our Sisterhood. Absolutely. Get to that boutique because it will sell out quick. Yes, absolutely. And, so, and stay tuned for the night. The end of the night, we're going to have giveaways. We have we a, are. So we have two giveaways. Or we, do we have get? merch. Merch giveaway. Oh, if you take a picture of your sisterhood and yes. tag at Design Sisterhood, that is how you win the merch. And then also we have the two DFL registrations. Yes, absolutely. So we are getting ready to go yes, into service. Are. So you make sure you get all your friends around. If you're at home with your mm -hmm. um, children, I always say grab those kiddos yes, because do. grab those girls. Make sure that they're watching you, leaning into the Lord. Absolutely. Grab your so, Bible. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Your Bible, your journal, mm -hmm. your notebook, whatever Everything it is, because need. it's so good for your kids absolutely. to watch you. It's going to be a great night. Welcome to Design Sisterhood Night. Oh, I'm so excited for every girl that is in the room, both at Joplin and here. Ooh, you guys are so chatty. I love that. And, oh, and I want to say hello to everybody watching online. God has big things for you tonight. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. And so many visitors. If this is your, if this is your first time to a sisterhood, 
Like wa wave, wave your sparkly. Woo! So awesome. And I just got to say, welcome a few special people. Chris Kane, do you all know who Chris Kane is? Chris Kane, I know, would love to be here. She's not. But she sent two of her team, Tiffany and Esther, all the way from California to be with us. Where are you? Yay! So glad you're here. Yes. They are doing an amazing work with Sisterhood there in California. So glad to have them in the room tonight. Grandview Church, where are you? Yay, so glad you're here. Freedom City Church. Oh my goodness. We love you, 27 girls with Shelly and Casey. So glad you're here. We have some missionaries here from Pakistan, missionaries here from Southeast Asia, a foreign exchange student from Germany. Yay, that's so cool. It's an international sisterhood. Yay. So great. So great. Then we have some people. I just want to give a shout out to Valerie watching online in California, Holly watching online right here in Springfield, and then Mill City Church in Wisconsin. One more shout to everybody in the park. Yes. All you first time girls. I have a gift for you if you stop by the Connect Center. We'd love to give you a gift at both Joplin and here. Connect Center here is just right those doors to your left and then go into the atrium. Somebody will help you find it. I have my book, She Prays, I would love to give you. And then I bought some nerd gummy clusters. Typically, I'm only a dark chocolate girl. But I walked into the office the other day and there was a bag of these on the credenza in the office. And I thought, I'll just try one. And I'm ashamed to say I'm already addicted. <laughs> and they just look like little flowers. So we're giving some away. Wait, 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 don't scream yet. Who did, who only got two hours of sleep last night? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Okay, at Joplin too, if you only got two hours of sleep last night, you need some sugar. But you have to share it with your, you have to share it with your row. So I think we have more bags. Where are all the bags? Oh, they're all spread out. Okay, so run that out. Yeah, that'll wake them up. Need some sugar. Oh, okay. And for those girls watching online, we got some nerd gummies for you. The first four to put a candy emoji in the chat, we're shipping you some nerds gummies. Yes, you're not missing out. Okay, awesome. How exciting is that? Okay, are you ready for some fun? Okay, the lights are gonna go low and then it's gonna go crazy in here. You ready?
you've been a sisterhood night before and you know what I love to do. Okay. Sure. Do you want to do it again? Okay. Here's the deal. You got to dance. You got to dance. Okay, let's pr I can't dance, but I can dance in the spirit. So, let's practice.
Come on, praise your King tonight. Oh, if you know God is good tonight, I want you to lift up some praise to the Lord. Hey. Come on. Man, it is so good to be with all of you here tonight. Who's excited about DSA? It's so, so awesome. Were well, you guys ready to worship tonight? I just don't know. I, I came ready to worship. I don't know about you. Did anybody else come ready to worship tonight? Oh, come on. We serve a good God. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. And I don't know what you walked in here dealing with tonight. I don't know where you came from or what you're doing, but God is in the room tonight and he wants to move. He wants to move in power. And no matter what you've walked in here with, God is our provider tonight, amen? In the Bible, we call him Jehovah Jireh, and he is God, our provider, Jehovah Jireh. And God is here to meet us tonight. And so I just believe that as we sing this next song, it's a song called Jireh. Some of you might know it tonight, but we're just gonna sing it out and just believe that the Lord is good, that he's working in every situation. So come on, can we sing this out together? Let's go. I'll never be more loved than I am right now Wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do To let you down It doesn't take a trophy To make you proud I'll never be more loved Than I am right now Come on
presence of the Lord is here. He's here to meet us tonight. I don't know what you walked into this room with. Pastor Eli mentioned that, that and we know when there's a, a gathering this big, over 3,000 girls in this place, we know that there's needs represented in the room. But you could just feel the faith in the room. God is here to meet needs tonight. He's here, he's here to heal. Jehovah Jireh is here. I gotta share just a couple things from last sisterhood night because it's so powerful to hear and I want those watching online to hear this too. I was talking to a, a pastor friend about 10 days ago and she said one of the girls in the church was watching online last sisterhood night in April. Her husband had not been able to walk for months. He had just had surgery that week and he was in severe pain. The surgery was meant to correct the problem with his back and it was worse. So he was laying in bed and she said, babe, do you mind if I watch sisterhood night? And he said, no, that's fine. In the middle of the message, she looked at him and tears were streaming down his face and she sensed that God was moving. So she just began to pray for him silently. He fell asleep. And then somewhere in the service, if you were here, you'll remember the Lord just showed up in a big way. And there were some prophetic words. One was regarding healing and pain. So she laid her hands on him, on his legs, and began to pray and call out to God. And he began to shake in the bed, asleep. And then all of a sudden, his legs begin to move. They hadn't moved for months. His legs begin to move up and down, up and down. Yes, hallelujah. Praise God. But that's not all. When he woke up the next morning, he had no pain. He could walk perfectly. He was perfectly whole. This is also a cool part. He recommitted his life to the Lord. They were both baptized that next week. So awesome. And why do I tell stories to you? Because the Bible said the stories build our faith. When we hear stories of God's miraculous power, it builds our faith to believe what our need, for our needs to be met by him. Another girl, I had the privilege of talking to her yesterday. She was watching online. Her name is Valerie. I think she's watching tonight from California. Said a shout out to her earlier. But she gave me permission to tell her story. She was watching and during the prayer time, there was a moment where there was a prophetic word that girls were gonna be set free from addictions. Specifically, there was one regarding sexual addiction. And God, she was like, God, I need that. She'd been addicted to sexual issues, pornography and all sorts of things for years. So she reached towards heaven there in her home, said, God, I need to be set free. I called her last night to see how she was doing. She said, she was like so excited. She said, Debbie, I am totally restored. I haven't had one desire since. So awesome. A girl named Sarah was healed of an eating disorder for the, the last three months, has had no issue. So we believe God talks to us. We believe in the prophetic. That means God wants to give us his word so that we can know what he's doing. And tonight, he wants to do just that again. And Hannah came to me as we were singing and she said, Debbie, I believe God's given me a word about some girls in, in the room and online and I, I feel like I'm supposed to share it. So I'd like Hannah to come and share it with you and then we're gonna pray. It's so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Today, there is somebody who is dealing with pain in their Achilles. So the back of your ankle, when you wake up, you're limping. You notice the limp and you just are asking the Lord to heal it. He's gonna heal you tonight. So the Lord wants to heal you tonight. 
There's also someone, and I believe this is multiple people in the room that's dealing with insomnia. One of them is the name Virginia. The Lord's gonna heal you tonight. You feel like you're going out of your mind because you can't sleep. And there's a supernatural rest that you're gonna receive tonight that's gonna prolong and just heal your body, restore your mind. If, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have the lights turned up just a little bit. And before Hannah shares the next need that she feels like God spoke to her, if you're one of the girls or maybe Honestly, you could be the girl that's deal, dealing with an, a severe pain in your Achilles. If that's you, raise your hand all, right. all over if that's you. Is there anybody? Uh, see a hand. Where is that? Oh, there's one back here. There's one back there. Please wave it high. Waving. Girls around. Oh, right here. Two over here. Okay. Keep. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands again in a second, but I want to make sure. Does everybody have somebody near them praying for them? There's a girl right here. She needs a prayer partner right here in the beautiful, oh my goodness, it's a beautiful um, sunflower shirt. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, she needs girls praying. Everybody needs a prayer partner, okay? If, if you know Jesus, guess what? You have enough pr faith to pray for their healing. Okay, so then the second one you heard was insomnia. You have a severe insomnia. You've been dealing with it as well online. Put a chat, put an um, emoji in the chat so we can know to pray for you if you have an Achilles issue. But if you're dealing with severe insomnia, I want you to raise, oh, there's a girl right here. You feel like you're going out of your mind. You can't sleep. Look at all of them. Girls, we need to buy faith gather around these girls. I don't want anybody left out. Raise your hand high. Make sure somebody's near you. Up in the balcony, if there's anybody, raise your hand high. Does everybody have partners around them to pray for them? Anybody need somebody? Okay, Ms. Hannah is gonna pray over you. But girls in the room, I want you to lift your voices with Hannah. We're gonna believe for miracles because you know what I know? We're gonna hear testimonies out of tonight. That's what I know. Oh God, we come before you boldly, Lord, because we know if we ask, we will receive. And so tonight, I just pray over this Achilles pain. God, this pain that's on the back of their ankle, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, as we're standing here now, Lord, pain would be gone and healed in Jesus' name. God, when they wake up in the morning and get out of bed, Lord, they're going to be jumping for joy because you have healed their pain. In Jesus' name, God, I rebuke insomnia, God. I pray for a steadfast mind. Lord, renew their mind, God. Give them clarity, Jesus, Lord. May they rest tonight, God, a supernatural sleep. God, supernatural peace, God. I pray as they lay their head down, even right now, Lord, they would feel you transforming their mind. Where it could be confusion, Lord, they would have clarity. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak healing. Lord, we know you're the victor. God, we know you're going before us. And so we just believe it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory. Praise God. Insomnia is not going to bother you anymore in Jesus' name. You're going to sleep like babies tonight. I'm believing. Hannah had one more word, but we're going to, I believe we're supposed to save that for a little bit later. We're going to go back into the song. We're going to just praise the Lord and proclaim him worthy because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy to be exalted above the heavens. Amen.
praise you. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Girls, the presence of the Lord is here. He is meeting us tonight. He's in this place. He's moving. You know, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. That as we worship him, there's things that happen because his presence descends. And in his presence, there's freedom. In his presence, there's healing. And in his presence, chains break, walls crumble. Nothing is greater than God's presence. And miracles are happening in, in our midst. There was a girl that my mom just told me about. She was in the atrium. And when Hannah gave the word about the Achilles, she said, that's me. And she ran into the room and God healed her. She ran in here. She's healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I don't believe she's the only one that was healed. And can we turn the house lights up a little bit? And I want you to just wave your hand and give God some glory. If you are healed tonight, wave your hand up high. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And if you're like, man, I didn't receive my healing yet, right? You keep asking, you keep seeking, because God is working and you are gonna receive it. Can we give God praise one more time? Praise the Lord. He's so faithful. He's so good. He loves us so much. Don't you just feel like you received a hug from heaven tonight? A hug from heaven. Well, as you find your seat, I want you to give your sister a hug and say, I love you and I'm so excited for what God's gonna do tonight. He's in this place and you can find your seat. Love it, share with your sister what God spoke to you. Share, if you are healed, I want you to share it with the girl on your left and your right. Let's testify to what God is already doing in our midst. He's moving in such a powerful way. Wow. I think the worship team can hear us, but great job, team. Beautiful. Yes. So good. So good. Well, there's a couple verses of scripture on my heart that I want to share with you. Um, th there's just, you know, when I get to be together with you, I just like feel like I'm so full of things that I want. First of all, I want to hug every one of you. So right now, just hugging every one of you. I would, I would just love to sit next to you and hear your stories because, you know, that's what we're here for, to encourage one another. The Bible says in Romans 1.12, I love this verse. You've probably heard me quote it before, but it says when we get together, I think they have it on the screen, yeah. When we get together, I want to encourage you, this is Apostle Paul speaking, but I wanna encourage you in your faith. This is how I feel. I wanna encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. That's what sisterhood is about. It's encouraging one another in the Lord. There's another verse in Colossians 3.16 that just God took me to this morning in my devotions and it says, and I'll show you how these two connect in a minute, but it says, let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your hearts and minds, permeate, permeating every aspect of your being. Oh, I love that. Let the word of God permeate your being as you teach, say, as you teach. It's talking to you. As you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart. Do you know, you're called to encourage girls around you every one of you, you're called to teach girls around you, every one of you. If every one of the sisterhood took ownership of that, we'd go to a whole new level. 
Okay, I'm going to take you to one more verse. Titus 2. Tell the older women, guess what? I turned 60. Yeah. I was like, where did the 50s go? Where'd they go? Can't be gone yet. Tell the older women to, <laughs> to be reverent in their behavior, to love the Lord as they should, teaching what is good rather than being <gasps> gossips. There's no gossips in here. No way. Okay, here's a big one. Or addicted to heavy drinking. Okay. Honestly, addicted to anything that pulls you away from Jesus and all that he has for you. Okay. To be sensible, morally pure, working at home. And you're like, Debbie, where are you going with this? Okay. I want to ask you a question says, the older women should teach the younger. Are any of you older in here? Are any of you older than somebody else in here? Okay. okay. Raise your hand if you're older than somebody else. Oh, it's unanimous, Don Cherie. Hi, Don Cherie. It's unanimous. They're all older than somebody else. Guess what? That verse is for you. Older women teach the younger. Wednesday night, I went over to West James River Youth. We had a time. Tate Parsley, where are you, Tate? Stand up, Tate. Tate Parsley. Tate, what are you, 16, 15? Ooh, your mom just said, don't make her another year older. Okay, Tate is 15. She went with me and she helped me teach. She was an example to the girls there in the room. She's older than some of them, so she could be an example. Okay, in our, in our culture, I'm gonna give somebody this Bible. In our culture, we want everybody to take care of us, to pamper us, to make sure they see our needs before we even say what they are. They want, we want people to be mind readers. And you know that can infiltrate the sisterhood? <clears throat> Not this one. No way. I had a girl come to me. She might be in the room. I love her to death. I had a great time talking to her. But she had actually emailed me um, saying, Debbie, I feel very convicted about Titus chapter 2, that verse I just read, where the older women, te women teach the younger. She said, I feel very convicted that our church isn't doing that, that, that we're not doing what is mandated there to mentor the women in the church. And I said, sweetheart, you got it wrong. Who are you older than? That verse is for you. Go teach the girls around you. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You find somebody to follow, and they're your mentor. You know, when Paul said that, he couldn't have everybody that was a believer in Jesus across all the landscape of ministry that he had. He couldn't go to, to architect coffee with them once a week. Do you get where I'm going? You can follow me on social media and I'll lead you closer to Jesus. But you do what God's called you to do. You lead. You fill your soul with the word of God. You be strong in God's word. And you lead the girls around you closer to Jesus. If we all do that, we will go to another level. Right? Right, Linda? Amen. Okay, you with me? Okay. Girls, let's lead sisterhood together. If you're going to help me lead, wave at me. You're going to help me lead. Okay, yay, yay. Lead people closer to Jesus. You got this. You know what I love too? Really, that's what you're doing. But we can always grow, always grow. Last April, 
we had the honor of giving towards Freedom City Church. Do you remember that? Freedom City, we love you. They were opening a home, and some of you may remember the story. John and I were, Freedom City is a church, for those that don't know, down in the inner city of Springfield. They're doing a mighty work with, with um, families and, and girls and all, all sorts of people that are just in desperate need of Jesus. And John and I were down, down there touring, and I, we were outside the church, and I looked across the street, and I saw a home. It was around the building, and I was like, that belongs to them. <laughs> I believe it. I whispered that to John. Long story short, within a week, that was their home. It needed renovation, desperate renovation. So I shared with you about it because they wanted to open it as a women's home for girls that were coming out of incarceration or in desperate situations where they need to be cared for and be mentored in the ways of following Jesus. And so you gave over $60,000 to help make that possible and also to strengthen just reaching sisterhood in our community. And so I want to show you there's the home. It's like so gorgeous. There's the new kitchen. So awesome. Is that beautiful? The bedroom. I think there, look at that. Is that gorgeous? So gorgeous. And they already have three girls that are living there. So awesome. You guys are making a difference. Yes. So thankful. Actually, we're going to have a chance to give towards some other needs if the host would come forward. Right now while I'm talking, that would be great. One other thing I just got to share with you because you're a part of this. About ooh, a month ago, five weeks ago, um, God burst in actually Brandon, Pastor Brandon. Brandon, you want to wave? Is he still in here? Did he slip out? Okay, Pastor Brandon, my son, Pastor Brandon, we were in a meeting and we were talking about, you know, what can we do to elevate all that God's doing in the sisterhood and design for life? And I said, I've got a cool idea, Brandon. We could do like a really cool interactive website. And we were sitting and we were just sharing, Hannah and Savannah and I were just sharing like this idea we had. And he goes, and Brandon is so awesome. He's so creative. He goes, mom, I don't think that's what, you're supposed to do. And I was like, well, I'm really excited about it. It's like, <laughs> so he's, Brandon is super passionate. All of our kids are. I love that. But Brandon stood up in the office and he has this board on his wall that you can write on. He, go, he writes on the board, sisterhood meetups across the nation. I was like, I was really tired that day. And I, I was like, I'm across the nation, I'm not quite getting what you mean? He said, Mom, I think God wants you to do sisterhood meetups across the nation and just promote it on social media and then go to different cities and meet up with girls in that city. And I was like, I literally almost, I think I almost passed out because I was so tired. I was like, I don't know how I would ever do that, Brandon. He said, well, you're, you're just, you're probably thinking to extravagant. Just, you know, post on social media, fly to whatever city, invite girls to meet you wherever. And, and then, you know, just hang out with them. I'm like, oh, okay, I can do that. So I prayed with for a day about it. And then I sent a friend, Jen Obrimsky in Summit Park in Kansas City. And I messaged her and I said, hey, Jen, can I talk to you? And I said, she said, sure. I said, so I called her. I said, hey, I don't know really how to describe this, but I wondered if you want to partner with me to do a sisterhood meetup. And she goes, sure. She said, do you mind if I announce it at church on Sunday? I'm like, no, that's great. Two weeks later, we had 694 girls. Yeah. Yes, it was awesome. 27 girls got saved that night. At the, so we, 
We actually changed the name to Sisterhood Connection, and we have two more already scheduled. We've had churches from across the nation messaging us for us to go and be a partner, partner with them to do a meetup. So I think they've got, so we've got one in Dallas on August 25th, one in Baltimore on September 15th. So honestly, take a snapshot of that. If you know somebody in Baltimore or Dallas, you can let them know that we're gonna be their sisterhood, Design Sisterhood is gonna be there working with the church there. We're so excited, but listen, it wouldn't happen without you. So girls are hearing about the gospel now across the nation because of what happens here in this room. So awesome. So tonight, I wanna give you a chance to pour into all that God's doing. So there's an offering envelope, I think, at your seat. If you could grab it and just pray, God, what would you want me to give? If you're new here tonight, you don't have to, you don't have to give anything. Maybe you are new here tonight and you're like, I wanna pour into what God's doing here. That'd be great. But you know what? God says when, when he's working, he wants to use us to do the work. He wants to use us. He wants us to partner with him. And as we give towards it, you know, I can't, I can't wait to get to heaven with you and meet all the girls that came to Jesus because of your giving, because of your generosity, because of your service. I just got to give a shout out to a girl. I just, she just came to my mind. Diana, are you in the room? Diana, where are you? Yell at me if you're in the room. Okay, Diana is serving tonight. She drives 110 miles to be here to serve. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every event, one way. On top of that, she has nine kids, seven still at home, I know. I can't imagine when God, there Diana is. Thank you, Diana. But, your generous hearts, Diana represents a lot of you. Your generous hearts make all this possible. Heavenly Father, right now I just pray, God, as we prepare to give towards your work here, God, I pray that you would, you would just bless it, God, that you would take every gift, every dollar, and multiply it for the work you're doing here. God, we love you so much. We're so, so honored and privileged, God, to be a part. I thank you for every girl in this room and I pray blessing over them. In Jesus' name, amen. So as they pass the buckets, there's gonna be church news playing, some fun stuff. night this has been already and there is so much more to come i am so thankful we get to be together if this is your very first time at design sisterhood we want to say welcome again we are so happy that you came tonight thank you so much for giving to the sisterhood your giving is making a difference there are several convenient ways to give place your giving envelope in the offering bucket or go to jamesriver.church and click give and fill out the form with your giving amount Thank you for investing in Project 12 and Design Sisterhood. If you haven't yet, be sure to visit the Design Sisterhood Boutique. <laughs> Super cute gifts and apparel. You'll want to take it all home with you. If this is your first time tonight after service, make sure to hang around. The Sisterhood Welcome Team would love to connect with you. Just stop by the Connect Center out in the atrium. Ask the host if you need help finding your way. Yeah, please come and see us. Meet some new friends. Get a free copy of Pastor Debbie's book, She Prays, and hear more about all that is happening here in the Sisterhood and at James River Church. After service, we're gonna have so many fun things. Stick around for more Sisterhood fun, a dance party, yummy lemonade, food trucks, a photo booth, and more. Father, 
dwelling in the heavenly realms. May the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn as we display the colors of heaven. As we carry the fragrance I've got to tell you a little story. Um, 
I was praying about conference, what, like two months ago? And I was, it was in early, and all of a sudden, I just sensed God was speaking words to me. So I got out my phone, I, I write a lot of notes on my phone because I lose papers and I lose journals, just, and keys and phones, and that's why I have a lot of help around me. I lose everything, just honestly. You too? Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else out there? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. We're in good company, Annie. <laughs> so I grabbed my phone, and the Lord just downloaded those lyrics. I wrote them out, and then I sent them to the team, and they put them to music. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, Annie, Annie, yeah, give her a hand and the team a hand. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, the team um, out in the, the aisles is going to pass out the Design for Life 2022 brochure while we're talking. Go ahead, hon. You can pass it out. Tabby, thank you for your help, Tabby. So glad you're helping. Um, and as you're getting the brochure, you know, I believe every year as we set the table and pray over and plan and prepare for conference, I believe God has a particular thing in his heart like that he wants to do every single year. But this year is at a whole new level in my spirit. There's just, I don't know, there's just a stirring that in my heart that God is gonna move like the windows of heaven are gonna open up in a, a new way over us. Oh, I was supposed to tell you not to open the envelope. The team told me to tell you that and I forgot. So, you can open them now if you get them. Okay. So, um, yes, drum roll, open your envelope. So, so, I'm so excited about it. The team worked really hard on these. We did a incredible photo shoot about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Are they not gorgeous? So pretty? Okay, you've got to read because most likely you don't have the same one as the girl next to you. Is that right? Okay. So then on your particular brochure slash poster, there's a particular saying on it, right? Do you see that on the poster side? Okay, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my, oh, I love that you're still playing. How cool, this is awesome. Okay. I'm gonna open mine now. I'm really excited to see which one I got. this picture. Okay. So, drum roll for Debbie. Ooh, I got She Walks with the Grace of Heaven. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Yes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, and this was the team's idea, okay? You're going to stand up with your gorgeous poster brochure. First, I want you to do Ooh, like, ooh, if you love them. Okay, good. We work really hard on this. I got I need a louder ooh. One, two, three. Okay, so here you're gonna stand up. You're like, what is she doing? You know I do really quirky things. You know that. Okay, so the poster side that you're gonna hang up in your room or on your really large refrigerator or, let's see, yeah. You're gonna hold this up and is Sydney back there? Yeah. Sydney, see Sydney? Salem, sorry, Salem. Salem, is. you're gonna hold these up like this, see? And we're gonna take a picture, but I've got to get what do you want here? Video. 
Brandon, can we get a video of this? Are you, can we get a video? It's amazing. Oh, don't get tired yet. It looks so cool. Can we get a camera up here so they can see what it looks? Oh, like, yeah, get a straight on shot. Get a straight on shot for them. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. Yay. Okay. Here's how I always feel. Did we get the shot? We're good? Salem, are we good? Oh, you guys did so good. You were just in a conference photo shoot. Awesome. Yes. So I always think that the brochure represents one girl. But we have, how many more of these do we have, Hannah? Thousands? We have that, and are, they're out there, right? So if you want to collect them and hand them out, how fun is that? You know, who knows, they may gain more value. <laughs> never know. Okay. But on the other side, you're going to see all the conference details. You're going to see a little note from me, which I always labor over these notes because I want, I want to push, push so much in it that it would take the whole back page because I love, I love to talk to you and I'm passionate about conference. So you can read that and then you'll get all the details of when it is and conference two is already at capacity. Already at capacity. Yeah, so we're over 7,000 girls registered already. But there is still room for you. There's still room for your friends, for your moms, for your daughters. Bring your daughters, moms. Bring your daughters to conference. And then on the back page of the back, you'll see our lovely speakers, one of which you're going to get to hear tonight. So anyway, you know the deal. Tonight, registration is only $119 just tonight for online watchers and for you in the room. And honestly, if they share that with somebody, Hannah, they can register for $119. You can share that with somebody and let them know that tonight only it's $119. That's a bargain. You know, girls, you need to invest in your spiritual walk. It's so worthwhile. And we'll... We'll spend a lot of, we'll spend $119 on a lot of things. This really will impact your life forever. So you, you know, take the step of faith if you've never done it before. Ask to get off work. Do whatever you can to be there. I want you there. I don't want you to miss what God's gonna do. Heaven is gonna open over us. One more little secret, actually two. Outside in the atrium at both the South and uh, Joplin campuses, there are flowers at the booth. And you can grab a flower for everybody that's already registered or who registers tonight. You get a flower with a $20 coupon attached to it that you can gift to a friend. It's a really good deal. Isn't that like so fun? Isn't that fun? So you want to be sure to do that as well. Knowing the days in which we live and the challenges that some of you face, and because I want everybody there, we're doing something that we've never done before, and you can reserve, you can put your seat on layaway. How cool is that? Lay away a conference seat for $45. You can lay your seat away. Oops, I don't know if that's the way to put it, but you might. Yeah, you get it. And then all you have to do is make payments and you just have to pay it off by September 18th. Is that not cool? I think God gave me that idea. I'm so happy. So tell your friends. Anybody can do that too, anybody. So, okay, let's do one more thing. One more thing. Let's raise our brochures or put them in your hand. And let's pray over them. Heavenly Father, pray with me. Heavenly Father, we believe, God, that you've ordained Design for Life Conference 2022, that long ago you planned for it. God, you put the speaker lineup together. 
you're laying ideas on our hearts, God, of what you want to use, God, to draw us into your presence, God, to move among us. God, honestly, to make you famous across the earth. God, I pray that every girl in the room would take ownership of this amazing privilege. God, that you would make a way for her to be there, for her daughters to be there, for her mom to be there, for her sisters, aunts, and grandma, grandmas. God, make a way. We pray that you would fill the arena with girls and your presence. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a hand. Amen. What did I forget? Oh, okay. Great. You could do that. Okay, girls, we're going to do a quick stand and stretch. So I want everyone to get on your feet. We're going to put some fun music on. The night's been amazing. And honestly, the best is yet to come. Pastor Dontree is amazing word, but I want you to turn to the sister on your left. And I'm going to have you give them a little massage. We're going to get closer. We're going to bond a little bit tonight, okay? Even if you don't like to be touched, you're going to get a little stretch tonight. So give each other a little massage. Massage the shoulders. Oh, that looks good. Oh, my goodness. Don't you just feel nice and loose, relaxed? Woo! Yes, go down. Go down the spine. Get those knots. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you didn't know the sister next to you, you're getting really close. You're bonding right now. You're getting to know her really well. Awesome. Okay, now turn to the girl on the other side. Don't leave her out. Give her a little love. I love that. Okay, I'm going to give my mom a little love. I don't want to leave her out. Okay, yes. Everyone say, ooh. Ah. Is it feeling good? Yes. Awesome. Get those knots out. Yeah, work them. Work it. Work it out. Okay, now slap her on the behind. No, just kidding. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Okay. Tell her, say, wake up, girl, there's more. Wake up, girl, there's more. Awesome. Oh, wow, how fun. Okay, if you have your phone or a journal and a pen, I want you to get it out. Because this, honestly, this is such an important time when we gather together. And I am so incredibly excited about who's bringing the word tonight. She is one of our dear friends of Sisterhood, Dawn Cherie and Rich Pastor Food Church in Miami. And she has traveled here with her three littles. So I want you to give it up for Don Cherie Wilkerson. Thank you. Love you. So you stay standing if you grabbed a seat just jump up on your feet with me for one moment because I just think this is the right posture I don't know about you but I've already been deeply touched by the presence of God and inspired by this community tonight and it happens because of the sacrifices of hundreds and hundreds of faithful servant leaders but it also happens because two people stepped out and decided to listen to the voice of God. And Pastor Debbie, I just want to honor you. I so look up to you. I love the way you live your life. I love the way that you steward what God's placed in your hand. The intentionality. Oh, the love that is poured into every single moment. It makes a difference. And this is a unique expression of the love of God because of the way that you've personally embraced your relationship with Jesus. And it spurs all of us on to love Jesus and to live for him and to stay planted in community. So come on together. Let's thank Pastor Debbie. I love you very much. And this is family. So hey, before you're seated, why don't you high five the person next to you? Tell them I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> do you do you have your Bibles, ladies? Come on, let me see your Bibles. Awesome. 
Well, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and turn with me to Mark chapter 7. And I'm so fired up that we've got Joplin with us tonight. Come on, ladies. Can we put our hands together for all the women that are joining us there? We love you. Turn with me to Mark chapter 7. We're going to be reading an encounter with Jesus. Uh, it's not just, I didn't come alone to be with you this weekend. I actually hauled my entire family from Miami here this weekend. And uh, your family, and so I've shared our story before, but for eight years we walked through infertility. I've been married to the love of my life, Rich, uh, for 15 years now. And for eight years we walked through infertility where the doctors have said it was going to be very difficult for us to conceive or have a child. And God did a miracle. He gave us not just one, not two, but three babies. And they are they're the joy of our lives. And Wyatt is four years old, wild, and he is wild. He's two years old. And Waylon, our baby girl, she just turned one. And somebody said this to me. Yeah, she, she's part of the sisterhood. It's awesome. Um, somebody said to me before I had kids, when you take a vacation with your kids, it's not a vacation. It's a trip. <laughs> and I just come to testify that the wisdom of that person is being walked out in my life this week. We have been having the best time together, but I think when you take a vacation with your kids, you need a vacation after the vacation. Can I get an amen from any of the parents in the house? I love my kids. They're the joy of my life. They're they're physical, real manifestation reminders of the goodness and the kindness of God. But can I just tell you, one of the best moments of the day in my life <laughs> is that moment that they go to sleep every night with me. <laughs> That moment that I say, bottle, check. Diapers changed, check. Pajamas, check. Book read, check. Song sung, check. Story told, check, 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 check. And I sneak out of that bedroom like I am on 007 on a great mission, and I shut that door. And you would have thought that I just won the gold medal at the World Olympics. Because what I have just accomplished should be recognized, should be heralded, should be celebrated. Come on, is anybody with me? Joplin, are you with me? It's a good feeling to go, okay, you've had your time. Now's my time. Because mama's tired. And I need rest. I don't know what your summer has looked like, but my prayer for you is that in these summer months, you find a few days, a few moments for rest and renewal. And that's exactly where we find ourselves in this text. In Mark chapter 7, Jesus has gotten away for some rest and some renewal, Pastor Debbie. He's taken some time. He's been ministering around the Sea of Galilee, and now he has gone into a Gentile region to hide away and to take some quiet moments and to rest and renew. He is in a place called Tyre, and he is tired. He's in Tyre, and he is tired, and he encounters a woman. And Mark so clearly shows us how out of place she is in this encounter with the Savior of the world. She is a Syrophoenician woman, and he points out in the text that she's a woman, that she is not Jewish. And we understand that she really shouldn't even be having this conversation with Jesus. But how many of you believe that Jesus was looking forward to this conversation? So this is where we find ourselves in the text. Verse 24 
of chapter 7, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. I want to talk to you for the next few minutes on this thought, desperate measures. Desperate measures. If you're desperate in this house, you're in the right place. Because he's brought you to remind you that you are not alone. And that he goes before you. Will you just bow your heads all over this room and in Joplin? God, thank you so much for every single woman under the sound of my voice. God, for every teenager. Lord, for every age, Lord, you brought us together as the family of God. And God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that your word holds true today, that just like you spoke with this woman and this conversation is recorded, that tonight you are seeking conversation with your daughters. So God, we open up our hearts, we posture ourselves to receive, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody set? Oh, come on, and everybody set? Amen. Amen. Now this text may hit you kind of funny, because as we read, if you're paying attention, it's kind of weird what Jesus says to this woman. Are you with me? Like, Jesus Why would you say that to this woman? It sounds so condescending. It sounds so rude. But how many of you know that whenever we read the text, there's a context? We have to understand what is actually going on within the scripture. And what you got to understand is that Jesus is having playful banter with this woman. That when he says this, he is not looking down on her. He is not condescending her. There's a lot of different beliefs when it comes to the theology of this text. Some believe that Jesus is speaking that to that which he came for the Jew first, and then the gospel went to the Gentiles. Others believe that Jesus is speaking to the that, that society times that, that people would be in their homes having a meal, and he's also trying to convey, hey, I'm hiding out here. I need to get a little bit of rest. But what we have to pay attention to in the text is that Jesus is not condescending or rejecting or being rude to this woman. In fact, in the passage right before this conversation, Jesus has a conversation about what is clean and what is unclean. So if he was coming against her, there would be dissonance in the text. Instead, Jesus is inviting this woman into a conversation, just like he's inviting you into a conversation tonight. And we see this conversation, this playful banter unfold in this text. The story's not about gender. The story is not about race. This story is not about pedigree. In fact, if you read the subtitle of this passage of scripture, it says Jesus honors a Syrophoenician woman's faith. So even Jesus himself is removing the spotlight off of himself and putting it on this woman saying, she's the main event here. Pay attention to what she is doing. So what is it about this woman? that you and I in 2022 should pay attention to. Well, there is a desperation in her faith that I think we can look to her example and we can have a life-changing encounter with Jesus tonight, just like she had 2,000 years ago. Come on, are there any women in the room that believe that God wants to encounter you tonight, that there's healing and that there's miracles and that there's breakthrough simply by talking to Jesus? And if Jesus made the story about this woman, then we will too. What do we learn about this incredible woman in Mark 
chapter 7. First of all, if you're, if you're desperate, seek Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, seek Jesus. This woman has a little daughter who is tormented by an evil spirit. Now, I know that you and I, when we read the Bible, it's so easy to make them characters instead of real people like you and like me. But there was pain in her home. Her daughter was being tormented by an evil spirit. This is not a woman who was serving Jehovah. Can you imagine how many times this woman who would have served many other gods in her home had cried out to those gods, asking them to free her daughter to no avail. She didn't realize that the very gods that she had opened her home up to could be the very gods that were tormenting her daughter. Women, it matters what we open up in our home. It matters what we watch, how we talk, the kind of conversations that take place around our table. We don't even, we don't even know what the enemy wants to do to get a foothold as you begin to gossip. I love that Pastor Debbie talked about that. As you begin to slander. We don't know the example that it sets for our children. They're watching. More is caught than is taught. And here she is, and this daughter is bound. And I can just see her hearing that, that Jesus is in town. And all of a sudden, she realizes this is the guy that everybody's been talking about. He, he heals those that are afflicted, that are sick in their body. And she seeks him out. It reminds me of the message interpretation of John chapter 1, verse 14. It says, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. And I can almost imagine her talking with her friends, I'm going to find this Jesus. He's in our territory. He's in our neighborhood. I'm going to seek him out. And she is looking for him. Now, in my house, I have a supernatural gift. I am a finder. I know where all the things are. All of the things, I know where they are. My husband called me. I was halfway on a trip. I was in a layover in Dallas, and Rich called me, Don Shree, I can't find the keys to the car. I said, babe, I'm flying. I haven't been driving. Said, I don't know. He goes, I, I can't take the kids anywhere. I can't find the keys. I said, well, did you look beside the bed? Yeah, they're not there. Did you look in your backpack? Yeah, they're not there. Did you look, um, let's see, uh, did you look uh, in the car? Yeah, babe, they're not there. I've looked everywhere. Did you look in the bowl for the keys? <laughs> oh, thanks, babe. Got it. I'm finding things from other states, ladies. How many women in the house in Joplin would say, that's me, I'm a finder. I know where all the things are. And I just love the determination of this mother because even Jesus himself couldn't hide from her. He was trying to be on the DL. He didn't want anybody to even know that he was there. He was trying to rest. He was trying to sleep. But her determination said, I won't stop until I find him. I heard that he's here. And can I just tell you who's here tonight? I know you've got your friends here. I know you've got your mother here. I know you've got your sisterhood here. But more importantly than any woman in this room or at Joplin, Jesus Christ himself is in the house and if you'll seek him then you will find him are you determined tonight are you persevering are you pressing through Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart you see the desperation of this woman does not isolate her it propels her what are your desperate measures 
Because we all have measures that we take when we're in moments of desperation. Maybe you isolate yourself. Maybe you uproot yourself. Maybe you just are like a broken record, just playing your pain over and over and over again. Maybe you are self-medicating. Maybe that's the measure that you take. You try to drink away your pain. Those pills won't take away your pain, but there is a measure that you can take, that you can be at the lowest valley that you've ever walked through. You cannot have the words to even pray. You can be in a place where you are full of despair, but when you take the measure of just calling on the name of Jesus, if you can just speak the name of Jesus tonight, the miracle is on the way. If you can just cry out to Jesus tonight in desperation, he will meet you where you are. I wonder if there are any women in this room tonight and at Joplin that can testify that you've called on the name of Jesus and he showed up. Come on, that you called on the name of Jesus and he healed your body. Come on, I want to hear the testimony in this house. Have you called on the name of Jesus? We're here to call on the name of Jesus. Now is the time to seek him, but she doesn't just seek him, she petitions Jesus. Turn to that other neighbor and say, petition Jesus. <laughs> See, she doesn't just find him. When she finds him, she has a request. Does anybody have a request for the King of Kings tonight? So we're here. Tonight is your moment now to petition Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. In other words, ask. Ask. You don't have to know the answer. You just have to ask. You don't have to know the outcome. You just have to ask. Once you're face to face with the one who loves you more than anybody else in the world, what do you say? What do you say to Jesus? I remember as a kid, the president of the United States came to my city. I, I, don't, I didn't grow up in a big city. It was a big deal that the president was coming. And everyone in the city was gathering in this arena. And my dad was praying before he spoke. And our whole family was there. And I'm, I'm one of seven kids. I have five brothers. My mom named all of us with Ds. Destiny, Don, Cherie, Denny, Des, David, D, and Dakota. I, I was never called by the right name. But I had my brother on my hip. He's 10 years younger than me. I was a teenager. He was probably two. I was like 12 or 13. And after the president spoke, he went into the crowd and he starts going down the line and hugging people and shaking their hands. And he's coming to me and I'm going, I don't, I don't know. What am I going to, I hadn't really thought, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And I'm sure he, had, you know, I'm just a teenager. I'm super nervous. What am I going to say? The president of the United States is coming right now. And he comes close to me, and my brother is on my hip. He goes to hug me. Now Dakota is smashed in between us. And this is my big moment. And I look into his eyes, and I don't know what to say. And every word leaves me in that moment. And the only thing that comes out of my mouth is, I love you. <laughs> That's all I got to say to him. He moved on to the next person. This woman gets her moment with Jesus. She doesn't forget what she came for. She doesn't let the nerves get to her. 
She doesn't let people hurrying her by make her forget why she came. She's on a mission, and she petitions Jesus. Jesus, I came here because my baby needs to be free. My daughter needs a miracle. There is darkness in my home. There is torment in my child's mind. And her childhood is not a childhood any longer because the enemy has her bound. Jesus, I'm here to petition you on behalf of my baby. I don't know if you're here in this room and there's darkness in your home. There's an attack and a threat against your children. Can I tell you that at one word that the, the enemy can be silenced? Can I tell you with one touch that the darkness has to leave, that the light of Jesus can shine into the darkest situation and the torment will be just a memory. In fact, it'll be more than a memory. It'll be a testimony of almighty God's power and authority because at the name of Jesus, every single thing has to bow. Come on, does anybody believe it today? We're here to petition the throne room of almighty God. The darkness has to leave. And she begins to petition. She comes face to face and she doesn't miss the moment. See, this Syrophoenician woman, who is she? She's an advocate. She's not just petitioning, she's standing on behalf of another. Do you know what an advocate is? An advocate is someone who stands in the court of law representing someone else. They know all the intricacies of the law. They know all of the ins and outs of how the court system works. And they stand and they speak for someone else. This mother is an advocate. And as a sisterhood, ladies, we are advocates for one another. We stand in the gap. We plead the blood of Jesus over one another. We go into our prayer clauses and we don't just pray for our own needs, but we petition Almighty God so that he might move on behalf of those around us. She is an advocate. The ironic thing is that women in that time, they didn't even, they didn't have advocates. They didn't have any representation. That's the crazy part of the gospel being entrusted to a woman first and foremost. In the garden when Mary is told to go and tell that she is the first evangelist, there was no accident that God decided to place value and worth over women. Because in that society, they didn't even have a voice in the court of law. But here is this mother that she doesn't need any authority to say, I'm going to still step into what I know I'm called to do. I will be an advocate for my daughter and I won't stop until Jesus does something on my family's behalf. She petitions Jesus. My friend Caroline and her husband, they have four incredible kids. And the week that the entire world shut down because of coronavirus, because of COVID, uh, is the week that she gave birth to her fourth child. And her fourth daughter, her fourth child, she has three boys and then a baby girl. She's a walking, talking miracle. Her name is L Lily. And she has Down syndrome. And she gave birth in the hospital all alone with a mask over her face while the whole world was turned upside down. Four months later, her baby Lily, still in the middle of COVID, had open heart surgery. Month after month. She loves this baby girl. Can't imagine life without this baby girl. This baby girl has brought the greatest joy that she could ever dream of. And on Mother's Day, on Lily's first birthday, she held an event across Miami to touch families who have children with Down syndrome. And this is what she wrote. This is one of my dearest friends. I think it'll speak to you today. She said, what a day. Advocate. This title strikes another chord. Don't get me wrong, Mama's pretty special. The advocate gets me moving. 
All of my four children have their own needs, abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, vowing to spend the rest of my life advocating for them, with them, and eventually behind them. And not only for them, but for people with all abilities. What a blessing this journey is. I'm happy to have a child with Down syndrome in our home to remind us daily of how special life really is. Come on, can we put our hands together for all the individuals? You don't have to be a mother to be an advocate. Hear me loud and clear. You may be a teenager today in the middle of middle school. You're called to be an advocate. You're called to stand in the gap for your brothers and sisters who are trying to find a path of purpose, but are lost and isolated and trying to find joy other places. God has placed you in that gap to stand strong and to petition God. But the beautiful thing is, is that we're told in the word of God that Jesus is our advocate. Did you know that? We're told in 1 John 2, 1, but if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the entire world. Little does this Syrophoenician woman know, she's standing there thinking that she is the advocate, but she has actually met the true advocate. And while she's advocating for her daughter, she doesn't know that Jesus is going to die on a bloody cross advocating for her life, that he is the ultimate advocate who paid the, the cost of sin across the globe once and for all, that he stands at the right hand of the Father and that his blood is enough for you to claim healing. You see, today, when we prayed for healing, we claimed it through the name of Jesus because he is our advocate. He stands on our behalf when the enemy, he's the accuser. So you can imagine in a court of law that you have an advocate, but then you also have the enemy, the devil, Diablo, that comes from a judicial term, meaning that he is the one who comes in and accuses. He is the one who brings claim after claim, trying to discredit who you are. And you go, Don Shree, that's not really connecting with me. Really? Because you walked in here feeling less than. You walked in here going, everybody else has joy. I don't know why I feel like a dark cloud is over my head every single morning that I wake up. I don't know why their marriage looks so good and mine is falling apart. I don't know why I'm struggling with this anxiety, why I stare in the mirror and just self-loathe and pull myself apart. I don't know why I'm dealing with this addiction. I don't know why my family is so broken. And the accuser stands and he's throwing thought after thought through your mind as he accuses you. But friends, I've got good news. Because every single time that he accuses you, you have the advocate at the right hand of the Father that says, no, 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 no. My blood covers that. That anxiety, my blood covers that. That addiction, my blood covers that. That self-loathing, my blood covers that. The competition and comparison, my blood covers that. The secret sin, oh, if you'll confess it, daughter, my blood covers that. Come on, can I get a witness in the house tonight that we have the advocate who stands on our behalf and every single time he wins. Not only do we have Jesus as our advocate, but we are told that we have the Holy Spirit, that the same power that conquered the grave lives within you tonight, that he fills you up with what you need on a moment by moment basis. He is not a percentage. He is a person and he is the advocate for all of us as followers of Jesus forever. Come on. Are you thankful tonight? We have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit with us. She's advocating for her daughter. And as she advocates, Jesus says something that she doesn't expect. He draws her into a conversation because he loves her. And she is not a second thought. She's not a distraction. You're not a distraction to Jesus. 
She's not an interruption. You're not an interruption to Jesus. But his full focus and attention is on her. And he's testing her belief. So as if he's saying, give me good reason. What do you want me to do? He's it's as if he's telling her a parable, painting a picture with his words. And this is actually a really awesome moment because this woman does something that no one, I'm not talking about just no other woman. I'm talking about no other person who talks to Jesus recorded in the word of God does what she does. This woman's got grit. She's got wit. She did not come to play games. Jesus speaks to her in a parable, and she just steps right into the conversation and speaks back to him in a parable. She inserts herself into the story that Jesus is telling and says, oh no, I won't just answer your parable. I'll take this parable a step further. You're saying that there's nothing for me? Well, friend, all I need is a crumb to fall from the table because we can both eat at the same time. And I don't believe there's any lack in you, Jesus. I believe there's more than enough to go around to everybody. So if you say it, my daughter is healed. If you will it, I'm going to walk into a brand new season that's going to change generations to come because of the healing power and anointing and authority that is found in your presence. She's got grit. She steps in there and says, let's have a conversation. Did you know that prayer is not a one-way conversation? Did you know that Jesus doesn't want you to just say fancy stuff or like change your voice all of a sudden when you start praying? But he loves you. He loves the way that you talk. He created your voice. He loves the way that you think. He created your beautiful, wonderful, deep thinking and pondering mind. And he wants to have a conversation with, G with you. And Jesus is delighted. He's delighted by this woman's faith. She says, hey, don't, don't interrupt the meal. Just give me some crumbs and we can all eat at the same time. It's like this Syrophoenician woman is wrestling with God, like we read that Jacob did. She's like, Jesus, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And this is what our prayer life looks like as women of God, as teenagers, whatever our age is. Joplin, you're called to walk in a life that is communicating with your creator. And she says, I'm going to wrestle with you, God, until you bless my house. And that's what prayer looks like, that we're interceding, that we are pressing in. Ladies, tonight is a night that we press into the presence of God. God, I'm going to pray until the addiction falls off. God, I'm going to pray until my teenager's eyes are opened to your grace and your goodness. God, I'm going to pray until you mend and heal my marriage. God, I'm going to pray until I know what to do at this crossroads of life. God, I'm going to pray until you tell me to move my feet. I'm not moving from the place that you called me to until I hear you speak. God, I'm not going to let you go until you do what only you can do. Can I ask you something? When was the last time you petitioned Jesus? When was the last time you really prayed, that you really pressed in? Because some of us, we put more passion into traffic on a Monday morning in our car <laughs> than we do praying. Some of us, we're more interested in pursuing that pair of shoes that we saw that we just really need and we can't find them anywhere, then we are to step into the presence of God. Some of us, we're just more consistent at scrolling than we are to actually step into God's presence and talk about the real stuff in life. Guys, Instagram is not real life. Social media is not real life. God has a real life that he's placed around you and your prayers can create ripple effects that can change generations. If you would turn off your phone, look into some people's eyes, start to awaken to the need around you, you're full of the same power that conquered the grave. Where you go, miracles break forth.
What you pray, God is faithful to answer. If you seek him, you will find him. And this woman, she petitions Jesus. My son, Wyatt, is learning how to play baseball. And when I say learning how to play, I use that term very loosely. He's four. My dad, um, who's a coach, came to our home in Miami not too long ago, and he pulled out of his bag a, a, a ball glove, and we figured out how to get his fingers into it. You know, that's quite a deal with a four-year-old. And at this point in my son's life, he can't catch a stinking thing. <laughs> he can't hit the ball. But he can sure throw the ball. He can't catch it. He can't hit it. But he can throw the ball. Psalms 52, 22 says, cast your cares on the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord. And he will sustain you. This word cast is very much like just throwing. Just throwing a ball. Cast your cares. So, so if you don't know how to have a conversation with God, you don't know how to let it go, can I, can I let you in on something? That it's not just a one-time throw. You, you're going to forgive that friend that backstabbed you. And the next morning, you're going to wake up and it's going to pass your mind. You're going to get hot again. And you're going to have to throw it again. God, God, I cast this unforgiveness. God, I cast this bitterness. God, I cast this pride. God, I cast this addiction. God, I cast this secret sin. God, I cast my anxiety. God, I cast my worry over my children. God, I cast this fear that sickness is going to hit my house. God, I cast this insecurity that my job is going to drop one day and I'm not going to know how to walk forward. God, I cast this, this feeling that who I am and what my self-worth depends on what I achieve or what other people think about me. God, this is not your will for my life. I cast, I cast. And friends, you may not be good at catching. You may not be good at hitting, but you don't need to be. All you need to be good at is throwing. Come on, is somebody with me at Joplin tonight? Is somebody with me in the house tonight? You just keep casting and you watch as God says, bring it on. I can handle that fear. I can handle that anxiety. I can handle that insecurity security. I can handle that mistake. Do you know the God that you serve and who adores you? Just put the ball in my court because it's on me now. I, don't, I, don't, I think that some of us, we should just start telling God, God, this is in your court now. God, this is on you now. I can't handle this fear anymore. God, it's in your court. Better is one day in his courts than thousands elsewhere. You may be taking desperate measures every other place in the throne room of God, but can somebody witness that if you'll just take one minute and pour your heart out to the God that loves you, you will watch as you are renewed from the inside out. Come on, if you believe it tonight, put your hands together. God, it's in your court. She doesn't just seek him. She doesn't just petition him. I love this. This speaks to me tonight. God's word speaks to my heart. She believes him. Turn to your neighbor and say, believe him. Turn to your other neighbor and say, believe Jesus. Verse 29, then he told her, for such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Matthew 15 tells us that Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. Jesus is impressed by this woman's faith. She didn't grow up learning about Jehovah. She didn't grow up knowing the family of God that she was a part of, but she had heard of this Jesus. And she believed that he was who he said he was. And her faith made an imprint on Jesus. Faith is belief. And her belief delights Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to delight Jesus with my belief. That before I even see it happen, 
that, that I trust him at his word. See, she believed him. You say, Don Shree, how? How do you know that she believed him? Because when he said, go home, she went home. There was no more petitioning. There was no more wrestling. There was no show me. Show me that my daughter is healed. Prove to me that my daughter is healed. She believed him before she even saw it. He said it was done, so it was done to her. That's faith. Ladies, God's, God's called us to take him at his word. He says, go home. And we see that in Mark several times when Jesus speaks to people as a sign that Jesus is pleased with someone's faith. Go home. Get on that journey home. Home is always a journey. You got to walk out that miracle. Yeah, keep walking it out. There's a path of purpose in front of you. The story's just beginning when the freedom sets in. There's seasons and years and decades to come. But she, she takes him at his word. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord. Let me hear you. Jesus, Jesus, how I just him. believe him? Will you take him at his word that he has a plan for your life? That you're safe in the palm of his hands? I don't know what desperate measures you have been taking. I don't know who else you've been seeking out to find purpose and reassurance, but there is only one who can speak peace to your weary soul. There's only one who is able to heal and set free and renew. And you may have been walking with Jesus for 30 years now, but your soul is tired. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Will you take him at his word tonight? Will you just believe him? It's beautiful because she believes that there's more than enough in Jesus. She says, God, I'll be me. I know who I am. I know the darkness that's inhabited my home. I know the, I know the torment. But you be you. I'll be me, you be you. Because I can't change my circumstance. I can't bring freedom to those that I love. But I believe that you can. And as she chooses to believe Jesus, a miracle transpires that you and I get to read about 2,000 years later friends, he wants to do the same in your life. He wants to do the same. Don't bring your resume to God. Don't try to prove. He's already said you're worth it. He died for you 2,000 years ago. He gave everything. Jesus talked about the kind of tenacity that this woman displayed in Luke chapter 11. Could it be that as he's speaking in Luke chapter 11, that he's actually thinking about this woman that delighted him with her faith. He said in verse five, he says, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked. In other words, I'm resting. And my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, 
He will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What is Jesus saying? If you're desperate, you won't be denied. If you seek him tonight, you will find him. But will you take him at his word? I was in a gathering much like this, probably four years into my infertility journey. Sat next to a woman, I didn't know what she was facing. Her husband was on his deathbed, and even as she was facing the greatest crisis of her life, she still decided to show up for church because she knew where her help came from. I'd never met her before, but she was a pillar in her church, a faithful servant of God, not on staff, just decades of serving, raising her children in the house of God. And I stood beside her and my heart was heavy, not knowing the great battle she was facing. And the pastor called for us to grab hands and pray for one another. And in that moment, I shared my need and then she shared hers. And I prayed over her and I prayed over her husband. And then she began to pray over me and not knowing what I was facing, she prayed and prophesied over me. She said, you will go around the world preaching the gospel with a baby in one hand and a Bible in the other. And that prophecy, yeah, you can put your hands together. God is good. Now, make no mistake, I didn't get prophecies like that every year of those eight years. No, I, I found this peace at the altars. I found comfort in my one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, but I held on to that word she spoke and what God had already spoken to my heart, and I decided to take him at his word before I ever saw it come to pass. And God didn't just give me one child. And friends, after she spoke it, I didn't go home and take a pregnancy test and find out I was pregnant. I held on to that word and took him at his word year after year after year after that moment. But God didn't just give us one baby. God, God didn't just give us two babies. He gave us three. And while I've held my first two kids on stages like this with the Bible, I realized tonight that I've never gotten to hold my baby girl as a testimony of the goodness and overflowing grace and kindness of God. And I thought this sisterhood was the perfect place for her to get to meet the family that she's a part of. Waylon, come on out here, girlfriend. Will you guys welcome my baby girl? This is Waylon Wesley. She is a walking, talking miracle. God's word is faithful. His promises are yes and amen. He is faithful until the end. He will see you through. And we await eternity with him. You can remain standing. But all over this room, can I tell you something? You know where the real breakthrough came? It wasn't when my babies were born. It's when I came to a place in the wait where I realized I had already received my treasure. And that if God never gave me a baby, that he had already given me more than I could ever thank him for. Because Jesus is my treasure, and Jesus is my peace, and Jesus is my joy, and Jesus is my foundation. And in my desperation, I finally found the one measure that brings a mission, and that's falling at the feet of Jesus. And I don't know how desperate you are tonight, but Waylon and I wanna to preach to you. It's not our strength, right girlfriend? It's God's strength within you. And if you'll come to him as a child, and if you'll take him at his word, there is nothing that he will not do in your life. Are you desperate tonight? Come on, is anybody desperate for God? Will you guys say goodbye to my baby girl? She's gonna go to sleep now. I love you so much. You're already a preacher. You're gonna have the fire. She's got fire in her, it's to preach. It's not to throw fits, amen. I love you, girlfriend. Standing all over this room, the presence of God is here. 
The presence of God is at Joplin. He's brought you here not to hear from me. He's brought you here to have a conversation in your heart. Would you bow your heads all over this room? I believe there are people in this room and at Joplin that you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. I'm not asking if you go to church. I'm not asking if you're family, if you're all Christians. I'm asking, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Is he leading your life? The answer is no. Let's change that tonight. Make that decision. Tomorrow's not promised. We've only got tonight. And you may have thought that you came because of an invitation, but really God brought you here because he loves you that much. Don't miss this moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. And if you'd say, Don Shree, tonight I choose Jesus. With no hesitation at both locations, I want you to lift your hand up right now where I can see it because I wanna pray with you. I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. I'm looking around this room. Hands are going up. If you say, Don Shree, I choose. I choose Jesus. I'm throwing my life into his hands. I'm, throwing, I'm tired of trying to figure it out alone. I'm tired of trying to make my own trail. I want Jesus to lead me. I want Jesus to be in charge. Come on, just raise your hands. And Joplin, raise your hands. I see your hands all over this room. And now, without any hesitation, look up and look at me right now. I want you to take a step of faith. Just like that woman, she took a physical step to claim what was hers. Right now, I want you to move out of your row, and I want to pray with you right here. And at, at Joplin, I want you to move out of your row. Make your way to the altar. Come on. Can we put our hands together for every single person? Come on. We're celebrating with you. Come. Don't hesitate. Come. 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 If you need to bring a friend with you, grab their arm. And come on down, Joplin, don't hesitate. Come on down, come down. This is a family, oh come on, let's celebrate this sisterhood. We're choosing Jesus tonight. We're choosing Jesus tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Joplin, I know that God is moving right where you are. People are still coming, come on. Let's put our hands together. Wow. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is beautiful. We're making room for you at the altar. This is a holy moment. I just love it. It's not too late. You may still be struggling, feeling like insecure, feeling self-conscious about people looking at you. Oh, just bust through that wall tonight. Just wiggle down your row. Get out of your seat. This is your moment. Come on. We're here for it. We're here for it. There's no rush. We want to wait on you. We want to wait on you. Thank you, God. Wow. So this is a moment between you and Jesus. The Word of God says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts, at that moment, He becomes the Lord of our life. He wants to lead and guide you. He's already placed you in a family to be a part of. And tonight, we're gonna pray with you. From the back to the front, will you just lift your hands with me? Will you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, today I choose to throw my life into your hands. I'm celebrating your rescue. I believe that you died for me, that you rose again. Forgive me, Lord. Wash me clean. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I love you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, we're celebrating. Hey, Joplin, we're celebrating with you. Woo! Heaven's having a party. I would love if you'd make your way right over here because we wanna have a conversation with you about next steps. It's not gonna take long, but if you'd all start to make your way right this way, this amazing woman has her hand, she's waving at you, just let's walk this way together and you're gonna have people that are gonna walk with you. One more time, can we put our hands together for everyone who prayed that prayer at Joplin? You're gonna be directed also. Okay, if I do one more call? Okay. Praise God. Amen. Hey, ladies, if
if you won't go anywhere, I don't think God's done working in this room. And I would hate to shortchange what the Holy Spirit has planned. I believe that there are women in this room that you're desperate for a touch from God. And I wanna look into your eyes tonight and say, you will not be denied. You will not be denied. His love is greater than you can imagine. It's perfect. It doesn't let you down. He can't. It's not who he is. There's healing found in his presence. There's rest for your weary soul. There is understanding and wisdom from his heart to yours. I believe there are people in this room and at Joplin that you're you're at the end of your rope. But it's the perfect place to be for God to pick you up and remind you that you've never been in control to begin with. He's in control. Will you surrender to him tonight? I know you've been walking with Jesus a long time. I know you know the word. But when was the last time you just threw your life into his arms? That you cried out to him. You can't bring the miracle to pass. He's a miracle worker. It is not a stretch for him to reach you. He's reaching out to you today. Will you respond? If you'd say, Don Shree, I'm desperate. We don't even need to bow our heads. This is a family. I just want you to lift both of your hands. I'm desperate for God tonight. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. Then hear me. I want you to take a desperate measure. I want you to come down here because we're gonna pray together. Just quietly, reverently, make your way down. Make your way down because the Holy Spirit wants to move on your behalf. At Joplin, make your way down. Just reverently walk down to the altar. This is gonna be a moment that you mark in your life. A moment where God reaffirms who you are in Him and who He is to you. That He has not forgotten you. He has not shoved you aside. The God you serve has not abandoned you. I don't know how many years you've been praying for the breakthrough. I don't know how many seasons you've felt desperate. But friends, he's with you. And he will carry you every step of the way. It won't be your strength. It'll be his strength. And his strength never runs out. It won't just be positive thinking or speaking out words. It'll be his life within you that fills your heart up day to day in the midnight hour. He's gonna send people to walk beside you. I really sense that. He's gonna put people right beside you. Gonna remind you of who you are. Gonna remind you of the call of God that he has on your life. All over this room, can we lift our hands? I wanna pray. Joplin, you're so loved. Raise your hands. God, we come to you. And we're broken on our own, but in you we are whole. We have that peace of God that goes beyond our understanding. And God, right now, there are women in this room and at Joplin that are facing situations that they never saw coming. It's knocked the breath out of them. It's knocked them off their feet. And God, the foundation that felt so sure for so many seasons in the past now feels shaky. But God, they are not on shaky ground. You are holding them. And Holy Spirit, I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives. And I speak healing. Healing of a broken heart. Healing in marriages. You're able to restore. You're able to redeem. Healing, Lord God, for those who have strayed, God, that the prodigals who ran so far away and shoved everything they knew aside, you still call them by name. You still welcome them into your presence. You adore them. And God, I just pray right now for every woman under the sound of my voice that there would be freedom in the name of Jesus. We don't come here, Lord God, out of our own good works. We come here because of your grace. We don't come here to prove our self-worth, Lord. You already bought our self-worth on the cross 2,000 years ago. And so we plead the blood, the perfect spotless blood of Jesus 
that even those, Lord, that are sick in their body, perhaps, Lord, their blood tonight, Lord God, is polluted, Lord. Your perfect blood brings healing to their blood. Your perfect blood brings freedom to their home. God, for those whose family members, Lord God, who have been tormented, God, we speak freedom in the name of Jesus. For women that are walking through infertility, oh God, you have not forgotten about them. You are in it with them. You love them and you love their legacy. And God, they do not have to birth a child to have a legacy for generations. God, you are using them now. They are not at a pause. They are not at a stop sign. Lord, you want to remind them tonight that you're in it with them and that you are the treasure of their lives. But even now as we speak that, I speak life to their womb. I speak healing to their womb. God, that they would carry children who would carry your words in their mouth and be raised to know the God that brought the miracle forth. God, I pray for women that are lonely. God, who feel like they can never be happy again, that that season is gone. All they can do every day is look behind them. God, I pray for a supernatural paradigm shift right now, where their eyes were back right now, God, forward, forward in the name of Jesus, that they would see the joy of the Lord is their strength. Your mercies are new every morning. There is purpose on the path ahead. There are new relationships. There is new impact. There is mentorship. There is just camaraderie and community, God. There are miracles in front of them. We shut the mouth of the accuser that would paint anything other than the picture that you have ordained for their life. Enemy, shut your mouth. Liar, you are not welcome in their mind. You have been ushered out in the name of Jesus. You cannot stay any longer. So stop accusing, stop intimidating, stop bringing up the past, stop trying to prove that they do not have what it takes. You shut your mouth and God, you speak your promise. Holy Spirit, right now, do what only you can do. I just sense there are women in this room that the walls of your heart are like a fortified city. You may be at Joplin tonight. You have unknowingly created a very hard wall between you and the God that you love. And it may be because of bitterness. It may be because of situations that we're out of your control and you don't understand why God would do what or allow what has happened or transpired. It may be because somebody hurt you. There may be church hurt in this room. Friends, there is no church hurt. People hurt people. But the church loves you. And God created the church. And the enemy comes against the church because he knows that the church is the vehicle for the message of God to go around the globe. And if he can isolate you from the church, he isolates you from your earth's mission. Tonight, if the walls of your heart are high and hard, the Holy Spirit wants to break through those walls. He wants to get to you, but he will not do it without you surrendering to him. And so there is a decision to say, Lord, I no longer hold on to this junk. It's killing me. It's isolating me. These lies that were mixed with a little bit of truth have led me to a place that I never thought I would be. That can all change tonight, but you have to decide to surrender. And I believe that for the women in this room and at Joplin, that the walls are hard in your heart. Tonight's the night for them to come down. Tonight's the night for your heart of stone to become a heart of flesh, to become a heart that is filled and revived and beating again with the love and the grace and the forgiveness of Almighty God. So right now, all over this room in Lake Joplin, let's lift our hands. And God, right now, I speak to the walls and the hearts. Lord God, that they would come down, that they would crumble at the name of Jesus. That bitterness, unforgiveness, 
that pride, that pain, all the lies of the enemy that would try to create a blockage in our heart from the Holy Spirit flowing a life and abundance through us. I pray, Lord God, that we would throw our hearts into your hands, the only hands that deserve our hearts. And God, I pray that hearts of stone would become hearts of flesh. I pray that forgiveness would be granted in this room. I pray that enmity would be laid down at the foot of the cross. I pray that bitterness would break in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that our way would die at the foot of the cross and that our lives would be resurrected. God, I speak freedom. I speak abundant joy that people that haven't laughed in months. God, I pray right now you'd baptize them with the joy of the Lord. And with our hands lifted high, we claim the victory that was bought by your blood. With our hands lifted high, we claim the freedom that you have granted to us. Come on, with our hands lifted high, we see ourselves as you see us, as daughters of Almighty God, clothed in royalty, placed in a family, and given a purpose for every season to come. Come on, if you believe it tonight, at both locations, let's give God the praise that he deserves. Let's worship him. Let's lift up a shout. Let's worship him in this house. Oh, I love you so beautiful. Um, Don Cherie, that was just stunning and so timely. And, you know, I told you that there was another word earlier, a prophetic word about a girl. And I just feel like this message is so for you. And I, I feel like I would be um, wrong not to give it. There is a girl Hannah felt from the Lord that's in this room tonight or watching online or at Joplin that has found herself pregnant. And the enemy is wanting, just like this woman in the Bible, to kill, steal, and destroy that life. And you've, you've wrestled with and contemplated, how can I have an abortion? And the word of the Lord is to you tonight. That baby is from him. It doesn't matter the circumstances. He created that baby. He created that baby. And if that's you, Savannah, can you wave your hand, Savannah? She's over at the side. I'm not gonna have you raise your hand, but if that, that word is for you at Joplin, there's a prayer team person or Alex or Elise that would love to pray with you. You reach out to them or online, please let us know. But if that's you, we wanna pray with you tonight. You know, Jehovah Jireh is here to redeem, restore, and to take what feels broken and make it whole. And that's what he's done tonight. With all of these girls that's come forward, you're walking out of here with renewed faith, renewed strength, wholeness, and understanding that you are not alone, that God has more for you in this season wants to use your life. So as we close tonight, the team's going to go into Jehovah Jireh. We're Jehovah Jireh. Yeah, just get Jireh. You are enough. Let's sing it out with every bit of strength we have and proclaim that in Jesus' name. You are no Jireh. Jireh. You are. 
is enough. That's a wonderful word to go out with, isn't it? Praise the Lord. God, we just thank you for all you've done tonight, God, in our hearts and our lives, God. God, there is more for us, and we can't wait to see what you have in store. And everybody said, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Okay, couple notes before you go. There's a lot of fun things around the building. There's a lemonade bar, food trucks, dance party. If you go out these doors and to your left, dance party out front. That's right. Oh, so fun. Youth tent, James River Youth, you wanna go there. And, oh, listen up. Don Cherie is here on Sunday. Woo! So you don't wanna miss it. Invite, Invite a friend. A friend. Yes. Invite a friend. Register for conference, best rate, $45. We'll get you a seat if you need Need to do layaway and grab a flower. How fun is that? In fact, they've got a little, can you put up the DFL? Oh, oh good, that now. too, that too, that too. No, the little promo. Can we play the oh, promo? Oh, yes, play the promo. Play the promo. Because it's so pretty. Our beloved Father dwelling in the heavenly realms. May the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn as we display the colors of heaven, as we carry the fragrance of your presence. May your every purpose be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. God moved in such a powerful way. We know that God moved in your life and we want to hear your story. So be sure and click the link in the chat so you can share your story with us. And we will be, I promise, we will be so encouraged by the stories that you share with us. Absolutely. It, tonight was so good. It so was good. so good. And what I'm, I'm so excited about because you have all stayed to the very end. And so we are about to do our giveaways. We are. So fun. So fun. I feel like we need like a, no. like a drum, drum roll. Drum roll. Do, 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 do. So our merch giveaways. Woo. So the shirts that we showed before yes. are super exciting. Our winners are Ruth Shirk. Yay. Woo. Yeah. And we have Samantha Richardson. Yeah. That is so awesome. So excited for you girls. You will Absolutely. be receiving those shirts in the mail. You will. Not only do we have merch mm -hmm. giveaways, we have, but we have two, two, two DFL, DFL registrations. Online. They are for Re online. They are for online. They online are. registration. Are you girls ready for this? We have Sharon Key. Yay, Sharon. Woo! Yay, Sharon. So exciting. And Kiva Smith. Girls, you will have those online registrations. Super, super exciting. Yes. What an awesome night. And just, we get to end it with giveaways. How fun. Absolutely. And a reminder that Don Cherie will be here on Sunday for Sizzlin' Summer. So be sure and be there online or in person. And follow us at, at Design Sisterhood and at Deb Lindell. We love you. Thank you for joining us. Good night.